So every year, ESPN releases their list ranking the top 100 players in the NBA going into the new season, and this week was the week that they released this year's edition of that list, which has, of course, stirred up a ton of debate and discussion about the subject. It's obviously impossible to make a rankings list that everyone agrees with, but this list usually gives you a decent idea of how those in the business view the landscape of players, and with that can come the realization that some players are a bit overrated by the general public, and on the flip side, there are quite a few players extremely underrated, which is where my focus will lie in today's video. Today we'll be going through this list, identifying the five players that I believe were the most disrespected and underrated on ESPN's player ranking list, meaning I believe these players deserved a much better ranking than they got. Before we start though, it turns out a good amount of you watching right now aren't even subscribed to the channel, so if you enjoy the content, consider hitting the subscribe button, as not only does it help out a ton, but I'd also very much appreciate it. Now with that being said, let's begin. The first player that I believe was very underrated on ESPN's list is John Morant of the Memphis Grizzlies who was ranked 35th overall. John Morant is not only one of the best young point guards on the rise in the game today, he's one of the best point guards in the league, period. Ever since he's been drafted, the Grizzlies have been exceeding expectations, his presence immediately sped up their timeline because they got so good so quick, and the team has been top two in the Western Conference standings in back-to-back -back years, with him leading the way, so his elite production is absolutely translating in the win column. John Morant is a high-flying, speedy, explosive playmaker who loves to push the pace, and he's coming off of a season averaging 26 points and 8 assists per game, while being named to his second consecutive All-Star game. It is ludicrous for him to be even ranked outside of the top 20, so to come in at 35 is extreme levels of disrespect in my opinion, and it all stems from the fact that he's had a few off-of-the-court issues that have resulted in him facing a 25-game suspension to start the year. I understand that being forced to miss 25 games due to your own actions is an unnecessary detriment, but it doesn't change how good of a player he is. So to tank his ranking this much because of it is an extreme overreaction, and when he finishes serving his suspension and gets back out on the court, he's going to go back to being one of the best point guards in the league, making this ranking look foolish. There's no reason for players like Drew Holiday, Laurie Markkinen, Paolo Bancaro, and even his teammate Jaron Jackson Jr. to be ranked higher than him, like they are on this list. The next player I found to be very underrated on ESPN's list was Kyrie Irving of the Dallas Mavericks, who actually came in one spot before John Morant at 34th overall. Similar to what I said about John Morant just now, the reasoning behind Kyrie Irving being ranked to this degree in these rankings is hardly due to anything done on the basketball court in my opinion, which just isn't right. This is supposed to be a ranking of them as basketball players, where you leave your opinions about them as people aside, but clearly because of Kyrie's divisive nature with how he deals with the media, they're holding a grudge and this is the result of it. Kyrie Irving has inarguably been one of the most productive guards in the league for a very long time. Some point the finger at him for the Mavericks' failures at the end of last season because that's when he got traded there, but the reality is that the team's defense top to bottom was abysmal, it's not just Kyrie's fault. Kyrie's supposed down year last season was still a year where he averaged an incredibly efficient 27 points per game, shooting 49% from the field and 38% from three, he adds in about six assists per night as well, and he's still one one of the toughest players to guard in the entire league, with his vast array of dribble moves at his disposal. I simply do not buy into someone like Mikhail Bridges being ranked ahead of him after Bridges broke out for, what, a half a season? And I also definitely don't buy into the same list of players I mentioned before who were ranked ahead of John Morant on this list also being ranked ahead of Kyrie. He's another player who should easily have a spot in the top 25 at minimum, but personal bias definitely came into play. The next player that got underrated quite a bit on this list was Kawhi Leonard of the Los Angeles Clippers who was ranked 24th overall. 
Kawhi admittedly isn't coming off of his best season by any stretch, but there's more context that needs to be taken into account before you can finish that claim. He started the year returning from a torn ACL injury, so he obviously took a little while to get going again. He started very slowly, but as the season progressed, he got back into the swing of things and started to look like the Kawhi of old. And the Kawhi of old is very easily a top 10 player in the NBA. Starting at the turn of the new year, so from January until the end of the regular season, Kawhi Leonard was averaging about 27 points and 7 rebounds per game, shooting the ball a red hot, 52% from the field and 46% from three in that stretch. He was going into the playoffs playing some of the best basketball he ever had, and even had a dominant performance in game one of the playoffs against the Suns. But then unfortunately, the injury bug struck him again and he tore his meniscus, causing him to miss the rest of the series. He's going to be fully ready for the start of the new year this season, but I get it. He's someone who can't seem to stay on the court. I would understand docking him a few spots down the list because of his unfortunate injury history, so if they were to have ranked him around 15th, I wouldn't have had nearly as much of a problem with it. I just simply cannot get behind claiming there are 23 better basketball players right now. When he's on the court, he's capable of playing as well as anybody in the entire NBA. The next player that I thought for sure got underrated on ESPN's list was Zion Williamson of the New Orleans Pelicans, who came in at 57th overall. Zion, I can fully admit, is probably the toughest player to rank in the entire NBA. His career has been such a wild ride of ups and downs to this point that it's genuinely difficult to get a good gauge on where he stacks up against his peers. Through four seasons, he has played in just 114 out of a total 318 regular regular season games, which is pretty problematic, and emphasizes how bad his injury struggles have been. The reason why it's so difficult to completely write him off with these health concerns, though, is because when he is on the court, he's really damn good. When he's on the court, he dominates the paint and scores the basketball inside at a rate that only prime Shaquille O'Neal can compare to in the last 20 years, as he's putting up 26 points per game, shooting the ball 61% from the field for his career. His the combination of strength, finesse, skill off the dribble, and agility make him a nearly impossible cover, and when he's on the court, he is undoubtedly one of the best power forwards in the entire NBA. Like I said with Kawhi Leonard, I would understand donking Zion down a little bit on the list like this because of his health concerns, but he's a top 20 player in the league when he is on the court, so ranking him 57 is about 30 spots too low at minimum. And finally, the last player I believe was pretty underrated on the list was James Harden of the Philadelphia 76ers, who was ranked 43rd overall. This offseason has had a lot of James Harden drama that is still dragging on to this day, but as has been a consistent trend in this video, I have a big problem with off-the-court stuff affecting the rankings of these guys as basketball players. James Harden may not be the dominant offensive force that he was at his peak in Houston, but he's still really good, and what he brings to the table is getting ridiculously overlooked here. He just led the entire NBA in assists per game, dishing out about 11 a night, proving his court vision and passing talent are also elite while he still also drops 21 points per game. Of course, his postseason showing this year was a very bumpy ride filled with some all-time high highs, along with some embarrassingly low lows in big moments, and Harden's reputation as someone who sinks in big moments won't go away until he breaks through. However, if people are going to harp on things like that this heavily for Harden, then it is incredibly hypocritical for a few others who are ranked ahead of him to be there. For example, Evan Mobley is ranked a few spots ahead of Harden on this list, coming off of a playoff showing where he was horrific and held the Cavaliers back offensively. Klay Thompson has never been better than Harden a day in his life and is ranked ahead of him. Bradley Beal's production has taken a significant hit in the last few years while also playing on a team that hasn't even made the playoffs and is ranked ahead of Harden. Harden's a polarizing player, I understand, but a ranking like this is very hypocritical when you don't hold others to the same standard that you hold him to. And with that being said, that's all I have for you today. Make sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and comment down below which players you think were the most underrated on this list. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you all next time.